Primetime Live presents a special hour of hope and inspiration. Up from nowhere, three people dealt life's most challenging hands, yet refused to let anything stand in their way. You'll meet this popular TV reporter who covers the fanciest parties and the stars who go to them. Ahead, her secret past and the moment of truth when she's in black tie and looks out the window. I saw my mother and she was rooting through a dumpster. Her parents were homeless and she grew up eating other kids' food from the trash can. Who dream the impossible dream? You know this man is a world-class tenor who's sung everywhere, from Ground Zero to Ronald Reagan's funeral to this year's presidential inaugural. He's also a medical doctor, an equestrian champion, and has no legs. Meet this woman who revolutionized an $80 billion industry, convincing ranchers she knows what animals are thinking. She has autism. How did these three people find the courage and confidence to go on, to succeed and lift themselves up from nowhere? Primetime Live, anchored by Diane Sawyer, Chris Cuomo, Cynthia McFadden, and John Quinones. Prime Time continues, and now, Cynthia McFadden. It was once said, don't dwell on reality, it'll only keep you from greatness. And that certainly underscores the life of Ronan Tynan. The singing sensation you may know better is one of the Irish tenors. Since 9-11, he's become in so many ways America's national singer. This is his story, how he literally lifted himself up. To dream the impossible dream. Perhaps no other singer has lived these lyrics more fully than Ronan Tynan. This is my quest. To listen to his voice is to experience the song of his own life, full of pain and struggle and triumph. Because, you see, not only is he one of the top tenors in the world, he's also a licensed medical doctor and world-class athlete. And as if all of this isn't staggering enough, he's accomplished it while being a double amputee. Ronan Tynan puts a whole new spin on impossible dreams. Well, you make the impossible dream not so impossible. It's not. That's the thing. It, and that's why it should be called the possible dream. Freak the impossible. Take me to your heart again. Ronan Tynan has never known what it's like to walk on two strong legs. He was born 44 years ago, both legs deformed. His splayed feet had only three toes each. Doctors said he would never walk. His parents took the doctor's advice and left Ronan in a children's hospital for corrective surgery that never seemed to happen. Why? That's, wow, that, that's, a, that's a very difficult question. My parents, they didn't abandon me by any manner or means. I mean, that was the accepted practice. Hide them. He stayed in that hospital until three years later, when his parents finally said enough and brought him home to their farm southwest of Dublin, determined that he would indeed walk. His father constantly encouraging him. You're great. You're great and eventually you believe it. You do, you believe it because you see in others what others see in you, a strength waiting to be harnessed. If his father's heart was easily available... I loved him. Oh, God, I loved him like you couldn't believe. His mother's was not. She wasn't the, 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 the doting mother who would slop and, and slurry and cry over you and, oh, God, love you. No, get up, get up. Get up. She wouldn't rest until you accomplished Absolutely. something. Absolutely. Cynthia, you have nailed it on the head. Put courage in your dreams. And in your footsteps. By age four, a wobbly Ronin took his first painful steps with steel braces and concrete shoes. His mother insisted they take a triumphant walk through town. I'll never forget it. She walked, paraded me out, and the priest said to her, is this the weak little fella? She said, none of my children are weak, she said. And Ronan is going to be a tremendous man. And she leathered him. 
She leathered him. She was the original tough love expert, making him go to school in short pants, even when other children were cruel. Short pants? Yeah, short pants and knee-length socks for everybody to see. But, you know, she instilled in me a positive attitude that couldn't be shaken. She made sure of one thing, that I would stand tall, no matter what. Even when doctors told him at 20 years old he would have to have both legs amputated. There's no reverse gear. It's that way. That's it. So full steam ahead, Ronan decided to become, of all things, a world-class athlete. Funny, Cynthia, I knew if I got into it, I'd win. I knew it. How did you know I that? I just knew it. He was right. He won 18 gold medals and set 14 world records in the Paralympics, the games for athletes with physical disabilities. Ronan then went on to compete with everyone else. His physical courage astounding. He was the first double amputee to qualify and compete in the Dublin Horse Show. Now, this can be a real trial in a man's day to make trousers fit legs and boots to become easy to, to, to put together. Now, I've got to get into them. He still rides and now breeds horses at home in Ireland. This is a, an animal I bred. And she was a champion as a, a foal in Dublin. He is known around here as Dr. Tynan because nearly 20 years ago he took another extraordinary gamble. He went to medical school. So now you're a doctor. Yeah. And you decide you were going to enter a singing contest. I was in my fifth year in medical school. And again, he was captivated by a dream. He took secret singing lessons and entered the Irish equivalent of American Idol, a show called Go For It. He made the finals, recalls his sister, Fiona. Before Ronan came on, he just said to me, he said, the old rehearsals didn't go too well today. And I was saying, oh, no. With your mare quante bello, spirata tanto sentimento. And he started, and it just took off. It was absolutely tremendous, you know. And I thought, yes, I think you've clinched it. He did. <laughs> The other doctors thought so too, and helped pay to send him to the Royal Opera Academy in England. He was 33. It was late to start, there's no question that. Did you think maybe I'm going to fail? No. No, absolutely not. No, that's not in my dictionary. That word is not there. Fail. Fail doesn't exist. There is no failure. Throw the dice, keep throwing the dice. But up next. Ronan Tynan faces the one obstacle he cannot fix. The one that is altering his life. When Primetime Live continues. Ronan Tynan, the Irish tenor with no legs, who's been an athlete, a doctor, America's national singer. Now finds the first thing in his life he cannot fix. When Primetime Live continues after this from our ABC stations. Primetime continues once again, Cynthia McFadden. From the this month, Ronan Tynan released a solo CD, in part a tribute to the parents who gave him courage and confidence and the ability to laugh at himself. I mean, I've had loads of episodes. I've had legs falling into orchestral pits. Oh, yeah, one, one producer decided, you know, Ronan, I'd love you to sit at the end of the stage, you know, just over the orchestral pit and just wave your arms and wave your legs and feel for it. Yeah, well, I did, and in the middle of the, the song, the right leg got excited and fell into the orchestral pit and nearly knocked the cellist out of the way. Now, now the... did you mention it or did you just keep going? Oh, gee, I'll tell you. Here's the conductor conducting beautiful music next minute. <laughs> like that. And the poor guy jumped out of the way, and I said, can you hand me up my leg? And I got up, put the leg back on, went side, and I met the producer at the side, and she was crying. She said, how much more can go wrong? I said, if I sit down there, I said, the left leg will fall in. 
humor in places where others would fear to go. Best feature? My smile. Worst feature? Oh, God. Uh, can I have two good features? Smile and these, my ears, they're classic. No one has them. Shrek, I'm perfect. You're perfect. So far, he hasn't seen his name in movie lights, but hey, Yankee Stadium isn't bad. Isn't that a knockout? Name in lights. You've become a New Yorker. Oh, believe me, I've become a New Yorker. I've become an American, really. I love it. I absolutely love this country, everything about it. This is actually where I warm up. He's become America's singer without even being American. He's now a regular during the seventh inning stretch. Do the Yankees really do better when he sings? Well, he's got the bling to prove it. His New York Yankees championship ring. I've talked to probably 25 or 30 men in the last week. None of them, nobody knows anything about your legs, nothing. Is that a victory or a, is that a good thing? I think, Cynthia, it's a, it's a great thing. Because you know what? They know me as a singer. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are cold. In the midst of the rubble at Ground Zero, where heart-sick rescue workers asked him for Danny boy. Amazing grace, how sweet. And in the National Cathedral, where his voice marked the passing of one president and the inauguration of another. You're a man of such accomplishment. Would it have been okay to have not been so much? Absolutely, and that's a hell of a question. We asked him to take us home to Ireland to recapture those moments that made him the man he is today. This is where I had all my dreams. I could see myself singing. I could see myself being an athlete, and I could see myself being a doctor. I actually knew that all my dreams that I dreamt on that rock were going to happen. And when the little voice in your head says, but no, you really can't do it, and Screw really... him. Screw him. You don't listen to him. So when you say positive attitude, you mean more than, oh, I'd really like to be a rock star. You mean, I'm willing to dedicate myself to... Bingo. This. I'm willing to work and prepare and polish. I'm sure you've met children who have given up. I have, yeah. I have. But I've met parents who've given up. See, who gives up first? Remember, Cynthia, nature cannot be tricked or cheated. She'll only give up of a reserve when she feels you're ready to do it. Which brings us back to his parents. His father died seven years ago, before Ronan's enormous success as a singer. So you're going to smile. Come over and say hello to everybody. And as for his mother, she now has Alzheimer's disease and no longer recognizes him. He has written this song for her, the mother whose demanding way of loving has taken time to understand. I realized then, my God, how great you were. I was thank you for the tough love because you were right. You're my girl. The song is called Passing Through in honor of the only battle this son cannot win and this doctor cannot fix. Put some courage in your dreaming. Have your footprints in the sun. He has made a song from her words, carve your footprints in the sand, Ronan, and lived a life by them, too. On your way.